on today's show, A Snowy Adventure North of the Border. We visit widely untapped Ontario waters where big fish are not just a dream, but the reality. Look at that dandy. Kind of late. And Laura Shara shares a holiday recipe fit for your Christmas table. Minnesota Bound, presented by Connecticut Water Treatment Systems. Hey everybody, Laura and I welcome you to this very snowy episode. Up first, our adventure takes us to Ontario. Yeah, you know, with COVID seemingly in the rear view mirror, thank goodness, we can finally cross the border again to go fishing. And it's ice fishing few have ever experienced. So quiet and so seemingly perfect. Heavy snow paints a colorful picture of Ontario winter life. This is God's country out here. You're not going to see anyone else. And that's what's so unique and fantastic about it. If you're looking to get away from the crowds, come here. Dustin Brown wants people to understand Lake of the Woods on his side. Ontario's version looks like this. Far different from the feverish fishing scene just south of the U.S.-Canada border. What do you think? I'm ready to do some fishing. It's another Canadian day. <laughs> Heavy snow blankets the east end of Lake of the Woods. I think we're ready to go. A short ride, like minutes long onto the lake to a spot where Dustin thinks we might find fish. We're gonna check the depth here and see how deep we are. Looking for about 56 feet. I can promise you it's a nice day out today. <laughs> see, this part of the lake, I love it. We visit every summer to chase big fish and lots of them. But I've never traveled here in winter months. <laughs> Hope to understand if the rumors prove true. We'll go to work, see if we can snap a couple here. Too bad we can't ask. <laughs> Not much of a crowd where we fish. Oh, look, there's fish. There's a whole school of them right there. Suspended walleyes. Perfect. Well, let's get down there and catch some fish. <laughs> he hit it. We got dumped on. That was a big storm. That was uh, probably the snowstorm of the winter, and we went out uh, fishing in it and caught fish. Yeah. A whitey. Oh, a whitey. That's our first catch of the day. We caught a whitey. Should I be happy about that? <laughs> yeah. The nice thing about this area, though, is you definitely you don't see anybody else. So that's kind of the difference between the Canadian side and the, the U.S. side is they're just you have the whole place to yourselves. Oh, boom, little walleye. <laughs> kind of small, but still a good little eater. Good work. Smiles all around. Catching walleyes tends to do that. Too bad nobody else showed up to fish. Not exactly a busy area on this massive lake of 14,000 islands. Somebody you know? Yeah, this is one of our trucks. This is our lunch. Yeah, I was gonna say. Yellowbird plows an ice road down Long Bay. If you call or text us with your order, we'll run pizzas out here, beers out here, sandwiches, burgers, whatever you need. Good thing, too. With this much snow, travel gets tricky. Let's tug in again. No hurry. After all, life back at the lodge looks like this. Might as well hang tight and keep fishing. Get ready once this snow passes. We get busy making memories. Dustin! Dustin! 
Minnesota Bound is brought to you by Connecticut Water Treatment Systems, Strike Master, Midwest Exteriors MN, and by Ice Castle Fish House and RV. The big snow might be over on the Ontario journey, but now it's time to chase a big ice fishing dream. We come for the fishing, but stay for the snow. Cold is the moon that hangs over Yellowbird. A thumbs up sort of day. The big fish, and we get lots and lots of big trout. With wind chills suddenly well below zero. We're gonna cross over to Regina Bay, which is uh, kind of by downtown Sioux Arrows. Yesterday's snow left nothing but room for fresh tracks. Absolute nirvana to those who ride. As you can see, we're in paradise. This is completely untouched. Phenomenal. World class. <laughs> the deep powder. Great conditions for riding. I mean, if you're looking for a good sled experience, this is it. We head for a nearby lake trout spot. Also a gem for local history. There used to be a couple gold mines around here. There's actually one at the top. Getting up to it takes work. <laughs> it's hardcore. The old buying house in Cineros here. Pretty old school stuff. Can you imagine living here, being part of the crew? It was all gold. Dug out of this. Welcome, uh, welcome to my cave. <laughs> <laughs> Wish me luck, I'm going in. It's always a little scary your first time going in, but these things are a blast. They're su such a neat thing to see. Little stories, there's just so much neat history on Lake of the Woods, aside from the fishing. There's so much more to do. It's actually unbelievable. The bears haven't ever found this. I can't believe it as well. But fishing. Oh, I pretty much love it. We want <laughs> big fish, and Bonky knows where to find them. That's actually my last name and my nickname, yeah. <laughs> David Bonky works at Yellowbird. He also works Lake of the Woods, Lonely Winter Waters. Beautiful place to live. How much traffic? Looks like it, yeah. Only got 10 pounds. I went to lighter line. <laughs> it's a really light line. Yep, just take your time. Cool. It's the coolest thing in the world. Big fish and there's nobody here but us. There he is. Got him. Look at that dandy. For so many people, that is a fish of a lifetime. All right, get her back. Yep. Come if you're into this sort of thing, otherwise just stay home. It's just unbelievable because there's nobody here doing this. No, no, it's uh, pretty much just us for as far as you can see. Um, I mean, you can do it again if you want. I'm gonna try. <laughs> Such is life at Yellowbird. A winter resort so full of potential with so many stories yet to be told. We're kind of enjoying it right now, having it all to ourselves, you know, and a little bit more quiet, but uh, we definitely would like to start seeing some more and more people venture to this side of Lake of the Woods. But here, because the fishing's so phenomenal, there's so much to explore here, and it's so untapped. So we're really trying to now start something from scratch that's never been done on the Canadian side before. Still ahead, a Minnesota-bound classic dedicated to the Christmas goose. But first, Laura heads to the kitchen for a holiday recipe worthy of the Christmas table. Closed captioning provided by Star Bank.
The holidays are a wonderful time to share your wild harvest with friends and family. So I'm here with Chef Jim Kimberg from Delwood Country Club and today we are getting wild in the kitchen making a holiday presentation of a French elk rib rack. You got it. You All got right. It. So what makes this a French rib rack per se? <laughs> it's all about those cleaning of the bones that gives that fancy presentation and that's what makes it French. Awesome. Well, what are the first steps getting started? Uh, we're actually going to reverse sear this today. So it's going to go low and slow in an oven. We've got our oven set at about 275. We're going to rub it with a little olive oil and we're going to season it with a little salt and pepper. Let's get started. All right. So we're going to get started by just taking a little bit of olive oil. We're going to rub that into the elk roast. And that olive oil not only seasons it a little bit, but also helps that salt and pepper stick to it. So Awesome. Generous? Yeah, you can be pretty generous with it. Don't be How's shy. That? Are you doing great? There you go. Now we have the back side? We have the back side, so let's flip it over. We want the back side to taste as good as the front side. Of course. Chef Jim is all about two seasonings, That's salt right. and pepper, and that <laughs> is it. Don't forget it. Not asking a lot here. <laughs> Voila. There you go. Time for the oven? Time for the oven. And reverse searing means low temperature and slow cooking. Low, slow for a longer period of time. So we have the oven set at 250 degrees. So low and slow, how much time does this need to stay in the oven? It's gonna be approximately 30 minutes. The goal is to get the internal temperature up to 100 degrees. That's about a three pound roast in there. So approximately 10 minutes per pound. But I do wanna check it a little early just to be sure we don't overcook it. Never overcook it. Never, ever <laughs> overcook it. So it's been about 25 minutes, yes? 25 minutes. All right. Woo, look at that. So we're going for 100. Looks like we're just a little bit over, which is fine. Um, but yeah, we're looking great. So we've got our uh, cast iron skillet. Pretty ripping hot, like medium high heat. See a little smoke coming off there. And how much olive oil did we just put in the pan? Uh, three tablespoons, close to a quarter cup. So now we are going to kind of lay this rack you know, top side down. There's the sizzle. There's the sizzle, exactly. Put the second one in. And Perfect. how long do we sear those? Just a couple of minutes. We just want that little crust of color. We're gonna bump up the flavor just a little bit with some shallot. A little bit of garlic. And then some fresh herbs, yes. And just adding another layer of flavor, that little hint of what is that? That's fresh herbs. All right, moment of truth, Laura. Let's see mm -hmm. how we did. That is so gonna be perfect. Hopefully if we did this right, it's that perfect medium that. rare, just juicy. It's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. As you gather around the table this holiday season, you can go ahead and share your wild game and memories with family and friends. You ready for a taste test? I'm ready. So good. It's really good. Merry Christmas from the Minnesota Bound family to yours. Ice safety, without question, is the number one most important thing to consider every single time we go out on the ice. Doesn't matter if it's first ice, middle of the winter, or late ice, ice is never 100% safe. I'm always checking the ice. Before I go any further, I wanna make sure that I know how thick the ice is, especially on early ice. I'm always, always checking the ice with the chisel. I do the same thing with the auger in the winter. Beyond that, I'm wearing a floating ice suit. This one happens to be made by Strike Master. It's called their Surface Ice Suit. And inside this suit, they have what's called SOS technology. SOS stands for Stay On Surface. Essentially, I'm wearing a body life jacket. Now, this suit will keep me floating for two hours with the pants and with the jacket. Beyond that, if I'm being honest, it's like I'm wearing a fish house on my body. I can comfortably fish outside in temperatures 20 below zero. I've done it many times. It's got padding on the knees, so if I'm kneeling down and fishing by a hole, I'm comfortable as well. Eye safety is extremely important year round. There are suits out there that you can purchase to give yourself a little extra peace of mind to know that if for some reason a terrible accident happens and you go through the ice, you know 
you're not going to sink, you're gonna float. The surface suit from Strike Master will keep you floating for two hours. Up next, Ron Scherer writes about a holiday field to table favorite. Minnesota Bound is brought to you by Radco Truck Accessories, White Bear Lake Superstore, and by Totem Resorts, the premier destination for world-class fishing. Today's Minnesota Bound Classic takes us back to 2006. To the day Ron Shera chased a Christmas tradition. It's a timeless flight, autumn geese winging in the air. On the field below, another timeless scene, goose hunters watching in awe. With geese above and hunters below, there's something else going on here, a tradition as old as the stories by Charles Dickens, hunting the Christmas goose. One of my earliest memories is, is thinking back on the, the Christmas Carol and thinking about Jacob Marley and and uh, all the things that happened in the Christmas Carol and, and how the Christmas goose was such an important fact of life back in the early days. Uh, if you were able to bring home the Christmas goose for cooking on Christmas, it was a very important thing. Around Rochester, Minnesota, the tradition goes on as these hunters gather at the H&Q goose hunting camp. Stepping into their clubhouse is like walking into a goose hall of fame. They've been gathering goose memories in here for almost 20 years. But out in the hunting pits, the waiting game is played in comfort. Peter, there's a buzzer system that they buzz us to open the hatch when the birds are in. I don't know, it's nice and dry here. You can sleep in here if you have to, play cards. All the luxuries of home. To see them come in on a couple wings, their feet hanging down, that's what gets everybody. A lot of guys think you got to shoot these birds all the time, but uh, Watching the birds to me is over half the hunt, and I think a lot of the guys agree. The other half is imitating goose talk. <laughs> Waving flags to attract attention is also a ploy. You gotta have movement, you know, everything can't just be stationary, because if you've ever noticed geese, they're always looking and moving and on the go when they're feeding. In fact, years ago, these giant birds were thought to be extinct. But in 1962, a miracle of sorts landed in Rochester's Silver Lake. Biologists discovered the giant goose species was thriving here. Today, an estimated 75,000 geese spend the winter in and around Rochester, taking daily flights out of town to feed in surrounding fields. Here, you can fatten up a holiday goose by hand. Meanwhile, back at the H&Q hunting camp, there'd be no shortage of holiday geese on the table this day. Inside the clubhouse, the holiday season was full of cheer, including cheer for the goose. Well, I feel a lot of respect and admiration for it. That is, uh, after all, what brings us all together. Oh, the tradition of Christmas goose. What's your tradition? We have a bunch. We've got roast beef, we've got Gruyere and Emmental or fondue and mm. French onion soup, but not all in one. That's quite the menu. <laughs> yes, how about you? <laughs> uh, we've had everything from wild game, crab legs, steaks. We kind of change it up every year. Love it. There you go. So, that does it for us. We hope to see you back here next week. In the meantime, don't forget to introduce a kid to the great outdoors. Transportation provided by Premier Transportation. Call 1-800-899-7433. To get more Minnesota Bound, including full episodes, go to mnbound.com. And to follow our latest adventures, like us on Facebook.